Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Gruff Talk. I am so excited about my guest today, who is Sonia Satra. And you may have seen her on A Guiding Light and One Life to Live. She is a former soap opera actress, but she made a major pivot into becoming an award-winning speaker and also a coach. So we're going to talk about that. But we're also going to talk about her new book, which I'm going to hold up right now. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can see it. But um, there will be links to it in the show notes and underneath the video. And it is called, What If It Were Easy? Yeah, we all want that, don't we? <laughs> Using movement <laughs> and mindset to create success in life, love, and business. It kind of covers everything. Welcome to Gruff Talk, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. So, okay, I mentioned you were once a soap opera star on two major shows, and then mm -hmm. you made a pivot to becoming a speaker and a coach and many other things outside of acting. Tell us about that. Why the pivot? When you're going through the pivot, you don't always necessarily know why you're doing everything you do. Um, but I, I know... In my heart, there was always some desire to, to help people, to make a difference. And so I was very, very interested in mindset. I personally had a life coach way before people even knew what a life coach was. In fact, it was Tony Robbins' head coach who coached me. And I knew... Oh, well, so you went right to the top. I did. I did. <laughs> <Round>. <laughs> To survive in acting, I realized, you know, it's all mindset. It's not always the best actor, but it's the person who can persevere, who can withstand the constant, constant rejection. So I really studied mindset as much as I studied anything else, and I was fascinated by it. And, you know, actors are studying mindset, too, as they're studying characters. So it all kind of fit uh, together. And also, I have to say, being an, an actor, you were, I think it was an easy pivot for you to become a speaker in front of many, many people. I mean, this is something you're used to. You know, you know when it's you give funny. a talk, people you're kind that, of acting, right? <laughs> you know, they said that to me. And I remember my very first, I joined Toastmasters, my first Toastmasters speech, I was so nervous. I was like ridiculously nervous. And I'm like, but you're an actress. You do this all the time. And I'm like, I've spent my entire life learning how to have a fourth wall. <laughs> now I have to break it and actually speak to the audience. And I'm speaking my words. So let's segue into uh, What If It Were Easy, your very first book, which yeah. is launching in October, which is very exciting. You know, yes. the first book is always, uh, oh, there's something so special about it. And yeah. this book is very special. I'm going to hold it up again for those of you who are watching on YouTube. Um, what made you decide to write this book and why now? So I think it was a culmination of all of what I was doing and all that I had learned and I wanted to have it in a place that was accessible for everybody. And also Moda Size is, um, is different. It's this combination of mindset and movement or exercise. And it's done in a way that hasn't necessarily been done before. Um, and so I thought that having a place where it could really be explained, I could guide people through it. There are some videos that will help people do it. And I just thought that would be a way to really um, be able to share it with a larger audience and explain what it actually is. Well, yeah, let's segue <laughs> right into that. I mean, I wanted to ask you exactly what Moda Size is. I mean, to the audience, um, what Sonia was just referring to is Moda Size. That is her, that's the name of her program that is spelled out very well and clearly in her new book. Um, so let's go right into that. So what is Moda Size and how can it help people to get unstuck? Because that's really what I, I got out of the book when I mm -hmm. read it was, you know, you're stuck. You don't know how to get to the next place. You don't know where even you want to go. You're, it's all about changing your mindset with movement. Explain this to us and how can we incorporate it, like some of those tools into our lives? Sure. So... 
Modi's the name actually came from Modi, motivational exercise, the size from exercise. So that was the hybrid of Modi size, and that's what I used to say. It's motivational exercise. But then people often thought, "Oh, great, you're going to motivate me to exercise," and I'm like. <laughs> yes, that's funny. And, um, okay, well, if you read the book, the you'll know that's not the case. <laughs> the, 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 Although the, moving the, is a big part of it. <laughs> the unexpected byproduct is people who don't like to exercise actually love motorcycles because you're thinking about something else. So, really, what it is is it's a life coaching process. So, it's a series, a seven-step process of questions guided around a goal, around something that you're wanting to do. And if you don't know. There is the question of what if it were easy? What would you do? Because often when you ask that question, it gives you permission to really just say what it is that. Well, if it were easy, I would do this, and that's usually what's in your heart. That is what you would want to do, and so that's a good starting point. And then it guides you through these seven questions to really help you achieve that goal. And the reason it's done for exercise is exercise is so powerful. Like we we put it in this little box of it's the only thing you could do to just get fit and to you know fit into some smaller size jeans or whatever. And yes, it helps with that. Great, but a lot happens in your brain when you move. Uh, there's a something called BDNF that's released. It's uh, it actually creates new new neural brain cells and the neural pathways can be. Connected, so you can essentially wire, rewire your brain towards what it is that you're wanting, and all of those good feeling endorphins. Not only just the endorphins, but also serotonin, dopamine are secreted, and it taps the motivational part of your brain. So it also makes you more focused, more creative. And more motivated, so it's really taking all of these amazing powers that come from moving your body, and then being very intentional about guiding your mind to a goal. So it's changing your physiology, which makes you feel better. At the same time, you're working your mindset, and when you put it together, pew, anything is possible. <laughs> no, I well, you know, I'm a big fan and believer yeah. uh, in moving your body and moving your body more and moving your yeah. body throughout the day. Yes. Um, and there's just too much science behind all the health benefits, both Absolutely. short term and long term. But also, as you just pointed out, beyond the physical benefits, the health benefits, it's also it so opens your mind to new ways of thinking of, you know, kind of thinking, I hate to use that term outside the box and to be more creative. As you said, I know personally, I come up with my best ideas. I solve problems. I come up with solutions when I'm running, exactly. I mean, when I'm moving my body and running. Um, and so I know it really works for me like being intentional. <laughs> and this makes exactly, you intentional. But I want Yes. Right. What, you, what you're thinking about as you're moving, and that's what the important part of your book yeah. is that not only are you moving, but while you're moving, it's, it's intentional thinking about what it is, what goal you have, how you want to achieve that goal, how you want to change your mindset, um, how to solve a problem. Um, exactly. You, it, so visualization, <laughs> a big part of what it is that you're talking about in the book and kind of envisioning that goal and, and then moving while you're in, it, it just all, it just all works. It just does, does work. Um, you know, people face challenges and obstacles when they're thinking about making changes in their lives. Like, oh, I want to, you know, get a different job or start that company or, and that really, whatever, whatever it is, fill in the blank. Um, and they they can even put obstacles in their own way. So what are some of the most common obstacles that you have found when you're talking with people, working with people with this program? Uh, I think out of the gate comes some of the sort of, uh, more surface. I don't have time. I don't have money. <laughs> I don't know if I could really do that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know, I don't know when, how am I going to make that work? You know, like, so that's usually the, the first level. Then it starts. Then once you go a little deeper, then it becomes more about like, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I can really 
make this change. That is what I, when people really care about something, when it's something they really want, then it becomes more weighty and it feels more overwhelming and, and bigger. And like you said, then we start putting in any obstacle that will like sort of justify our reason not to go forward. I would think fear of failure too, just kind of right off the bat must be there too. Oh yeah. I'd like to do this, but I'm good enough. Yeah, fear of failure mm-hmm. and fear mm-hmm. of success. You know, it's interesting. Some level of fear of success comes into you. You know, it's going to change my life. What does that mean? You know, we get used to being in our patterns. And when you suddenly look at any kind of life change, that feels scary, even when it's good. So do you have any examples of people who have used your program or that you've worked with because you I know um, coach uh, individuals but also you coach through companies who bring you on board to help their employees so have you do you have any examples and like positive stories about people who have used this program Mm -mm. well I'll give you two from two different spectrums one um, was a person who was really feeling stuck and she really didn't know what she wanted to do. She was in a, um, a very sort of a dead end job, um, not very creative. And she was so creative. And during this class, she came up with an entire business idea, um, where she could use her artistic talents. And she created a whole, uh, greeting card idea where she was painting on it. So she did all of these beautiful paintings and sayings. And she started to sell these cards on Etsy and that grew into opening up a whole world of creativity. She then started to sell her art. She also started to get into jewelry. She now works and designs jewelry for a company. So it really opened up. That's a good success story. That was a huge, and it started with this little idea. Maybe I'll just do this on the side. And it was like, it again, small step, it just sort of opened. And then on another extreme, you know, often people think because it's exercise, it's fitness related. And I always say it's really, it. I would say three quarters of the people's, their goals are not fitness related. But this person happened to be um, morbidly obese and she desperately needed to lose weight. And she has lost, in conjunction, she did, it gave her the courage to do the surgery um, but she did, so she did the, do the, your book so she could stick with it. See, it well, she does. And she's right? like, it's not anymore. It's not just modicized. It's a way of life now for her. So whenever she gets anxious or frustrated or depressed or her place where she would used to go to food, she would now go for a walk and do mindset or she happens to like swimming. That's also good for her body. So she created this thing where every lap she would, you know, release stuff that she didn't want and then she would pull in stuff that she did. And so uh, she, um, you can modify it. That's the beauty of it. You can modify it for whatever your body shape is and whatever physical um, abilities you have. You can make it super hard and aerobic and yeah. you can make it as simple as a walk or even you could do stuff in your chair if that's where you're starting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, right now the, the audience is listening and they're saying, okay, Sonia, what can I do today right after this show is over that I can start to, in addition to getting the book, of I was course. I going to say, go get the book. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because it really does outline it all very, very clearly. I mean, it's an actual program so that you want to follow. But um, what can what can people do to kind of almost pave the way to starting the program that they can do right now today? Absolutely. A few tips. So I would say, first off, you know, Find, find that thing that perhaps you're really wanting and, and give yourself permission. Just what if it were easy? What would you do? And just, I always say, just humor it. You can always go back to the perspective of I can't or it's too scary or what if I fail or any of those things. But just for now and, and go for a walk and just imagine that. Just give yourself permission to, to just think what's possible because that's often where we stop ourselves too. You know, we won't even visualize it. We won't even dream about it. We won't even let ourselves do that. Right. So just to give yourself for the next 20 minutes or 10 minutes, I'm going to let myself just imagine 
what would happen if I did this? What would happen if you succeeded? And then this is a question from the book, but it's such an important one because another thing I see that people do is when they have a challenge, they look at the long list of reasons why they can't do it or the things they don't have. And yet we have so many things to make it possible. So look at, well, what's some things that you, what are some things you do have? Maybe you have an expertise or a personal experience, or you know somebody who knows somebody, or you have a education or a certification, or you just have the desire is good enough to start, you know, but really list out some of the things that you have. And then with that, what's maybe one step you could take to move in that direction and be kind, be gentle with yourself and just start mm -hmm. to take those little steps. I love that tip so much because very often I think people, when they're thinking about a goal, like maybe, maybe it's a really big one, like yeah. starting the company, like the great example that you gave or losing a massive amount of weight. You think I can't do it because I don't have the, I, I don't have the qualifications. I don't have the, I don't have that. So who am I to mm -hmm. try to, to get, achieve that goal or have that as a goal? Um, and when you think about it, when you can pull together on a list, like even make a bullet point list of all of those things that really do add up is a great tip. And then you can wow yourself, I think, when you look at that sheet of paper or, or the list that you've made in your head. It mm -hmm. gives you a little more confidence. It mm -hmm. puts you in that position of realization, all right, I do have some things. And from that perspective, when you're in a more positive perspective, you're so much more resourceful. And then you can tap into mm -hmm. that place that's like, all right, well, I have that, so then I could do this. But it changes actually your actions very often as opposed to, you know, I don't have this, 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 and this. And then you, you go to something harder when really, when you start with what you have, you can go to, it will feed into that next action step that's not nearly as intimidating or overwhelming. Right, definitely it's a confidence booster, no question yeah. about it. All right, Sonia, this was really, really great. I wish you the best of luck with the launch of your first book. Um, Thank you. What if it were easy? And by the way, I really, we didn't go into it, but um, the story that you tell about how you came up with that title in the uh, the intro to your book, it's a, it's a great story. And it was like, wowed me. I was like, wow. That was mm -hmm. really quite resilient of you and your husband. Um, yes. And I, I just found that to be in, in a great story that if all of you listening, uh, I think you'll really enjoy and uh, be quite motivated by. So, so Sonia, it really was great. Um, we're excited about the book. I always like to leave the Gruff Talk audience with um, three key takeaways that you really want them to remember from our talk today. What are they? Mm -hmm. So I'll go with the modicized theme, movement, just move, because movement will change how you feel in so many ways. So whatever that looks like for you, move. Your mindset, um, shifting that perspective is so key. It really is. Asking questions that will elicit a better response. So instead of why can't I do this, asking good questions that will lead to better actions. And then try putting them together to really make it pop. <laughs> so move, mind, and Wonderful. modicize. And modicize, I love it. I, when I hear the word, you know, reading is one thing, but when you hear it, it's like, I feel like I'm on a motorcycle. <laughs> it's like zooming ahead <laughs> to my goal, modicizing, get out there. <laughs> I love it. Does it fast track, oh, you know, best I of think luck, Sonia where I've really changed. It's like manifesting through movement is really what starts to happen. Yeah. So yeah. It does. Absolutely. And we Go love that word happen. too. We love that word too. <laughs> <laughs> Go make it happen, everyone. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Sonia. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.